Welcome to part 2 to explain how parameters work in ACC. In this video, we'll be covering the following topics overall. 1. Group Perm Handler Data Asset Represents parameter groupings. 2. Perm Handler Data Asset Associated with a grouping, it will contain the list of possible parameters for a grouping. 3. Perm Handler The object that interprets values by their types. It's within classes inheriting from this object that the blueprint or C++ code for the parameter will be specified. 4. Example with float. We'll showcase an example using a float type, but the operation remains the same for other types. Now we will see how the parameters work on the creation data in the ACC system. So, we will look at the group perm handler and the perm handler. The written documentation already explains how this part works. As can be seen, we'll need to first use a data asset group perm handler. When looking at our species mannequin, we notice that we don't have a group perm handler yet. We could use an existing one, such as the Epic HMN DA ACC Epic HMN GPHD, or base yours on it. However, for the purpose of the video, I'll create one from scratch to better illustrate its functionality. Just like with anything else, when you want to use a data asset that you can't find in the menu, all you need to do is select data asset in miscellaneous and choose the inheritance you want to use. In our case, it's the group room handler. Generally, like any other asset, it's preferable to adhere to a naming convention for better organization. So, I'll name it DAACC Mannequin GPHD at the root folder of the species. Next, in this asset, we can add groupings for our potential parameters. Following the examples, we had for instance, body, head, hair to manage parameters for the body, head, and hair within each grouping. If desired, we could have a single grouping that encompasses everything, but this will be done according to your preferences. For the video context, I'll create a body grouping. Now we need to link this grouping key to a data asset called Perm Handler Data Asset. The Perm Handler Data Asset will simply contain a list of possible parameters. As seen in the documentation, we have examples for morphs, eye size, eyebrows, and many more. Essentially, there are no restrictions or predefined parameters in the ACC system compared to the old version. You have the freedom to have X number of possible parameters. However, performance considerations are also crucial which is why I've organized them into groupings. A perm handler object will have multiple events for receiving values by type. For example, when sending a parameter as a float, the onReceiveFloat function will be called. Essentially, within the perm handler objects, we interpret the information as needed to manipulate our characters. So, back to our demonstration, we'll first create a perm handler data asset that will contain the possible parameters. I'll give the asset a coherent name to indicate that it's supposed to correspond to the parameters of the mannequin's body. Don't forget to link our perm handler data asset to the body grouping in our group perm handler data asset, of course. Finally, here we are in our perm handler data asset. As mentioned earlier, we can add as many parameters as we want, keeping in mind that we still need to be careful for performance reasons. Each parameter will have a key associated with an object, essentially an object that inherits at least from UAC CPRM handler. As you can see, we already have created perm handlers that also serve as examples. Additionally, we add the advantage of being able to reuse parameters among assets. For the video, we'll create a perm handler from scratch. To do this, simply create a new blueprint class that inherits from ACC perm handler. For this example, let's create a parameter that will change the mesh size based on a given float value. So, I'll name it for consistency, bpph increases eyes, and I'll give it the associated key, increases eyes. Now we'll override the onReceiveFloat method because we want to interpret the increases eyes parameter when it's a float. 
But before that, let's not forget to associate the group perm handler data asset with our species. As we connect all of this, we begin to understand the recursive associations we've created. To demonstrate what these parameters will correspond to, let's revisit the load creation from video part 1. We need to define the data corresponding to the species configuration. Within group perms, we add a grouping body, as we saw in our group perm handler data asset. Next, we'll specify a parameter of type float that will correspond to increases eyes. Then, we'll override the onReceiveFloat method so that we can thoroughly understand how the interpretation works. Before writing the necessary code to change the mesh size with this parameter, I'll simply display a message to show that we're entering this function. I'm displaying a message with the relevant float value. We can retrieve the value of a float perm using the get method developed in C++ instead of breaking the struct. And there you have it, if we launch the game, we'll see the print with our associated float value. The logic remains the same when adding the ability to receive an int or other types. This part is an additional example, I won't add any comments. Feel free to skip ahead in the video if you wish. Now that we understand how parameter interpretation works, let's manipulate the mesh to change its size. We can retrieve the mesh from the owner of the ACC creation component using the ACC creative actor interface. For example, we can call a method from the ACC creation actor interface, get body mesh, from ACC creation component. Or, we can use the static method, get valid body mesh, from the actor owner of ACC creation component. Then I call the set relative scale 3D method to change the mesh size based on the float parameter value. Now, if we launch the game, we'll notice that indeed the mesh will change its size according to the increases eyes parameter. We don't see a big difference with 1.6, so for the example, I'll specify a larger value like 10 or 15 to see a more noticeable result. That's all there is to know about the primary functioning of parameters. Whether it's in float tag color types, the principle remains the same. It's up to you to interpret them to manipulate your meshes and perform your custom processing. Understanding this mechanism is crucial before delving deeper into learning how to manipulate information with save game systems for saving loading purposes, or before exploring how graphical UI parts can works. Thank you for watching the video, and see you next time.